This video is for the dropshippers who are testing 10, 20, 100 products, hoping to find that one winner and scale it to the moon. Here's why you're not seeing success. It's for people that are planning on doing that because they've been told to do it by some guy on YouTube that's got fancy animations and edits in their videos or these sound effects like Phew! I wasted months of my time following these people's advice and I'm making this video in hopes that you don't do the same and I know these flow charts are boring believe me but I'm, I'm gonna make this as quick and as painless as possible and I want to start off with the basics because to really understand my point you have to understand the basics from first principles thinking this will only take a minute all right there's Different types of businesses, all right? There's really, what can you sell? You can sell a service or a product, and we're selling products here, so we're not gonna talk about services, all right? What types of products can you sell? You can sell content for eyeball software, CRMs, different platforms. You can sell digital products like courses, info products, or templates, Facebook ad templates, something like that. You can sell B2B, like industrial, like parts for an airplane, parts for a submarine, or systems and processes, like license, like these are infinite. I need you to understand that there is a bunch. I did not put all of them here because I don't have time to list out all of them here. But really, we're talking about B2C, business to consumer. That's what we're doing here. And I want to talk about the two ways you can do it. One is retail and the other is e-commerce, direct to consumer, which is what we're talking about here. Dropshipping, retail. What does that look like? In order to understand this really well, we have to understand retail really well. When you walk into a store, what sections are there? There's a beauty section, there's a fitness section, there's a food section, there's accessory section, there's phone sections. There are different sections of products. It goes on to infinity. There is endless amounts of categories of products you can sell. And for the sake of simplicity, let's pick one, food, all right? Let's say we're gonna sell a food in a retail market. What type of food can you sell? Is it going to be organic food? Is it going to be junk food? Is it going to be healthy food? Is it going to be fruits, frozen food? There's an infinite amount of types of food you can sell. I know this is getting repetitive, but I'm trying to make a point here. All right, let's say we're getting junk food. Let's say we're selling junk food. What type of junk food can you sell? You can sell soda. You can sell chips. You can sell candy. You can sell chocolate. You can sell cakes. There's an infinite amount of junk food types you can sell. All right, you see where I'm going with this? All right, let's pick one, chips. What types of chips, what brands of chips are out there? There's Lay's, there's Pringles, there's Cheetos, there's Doritos, there's an infinite amount. I don't even know, I bet there's a ton and you just know like the top five or 10, okay? Let's pick one again for simplicity's sake, Lay's. What types of chips do they sell? Well, they sell different flavors. They sell classic, barbecue, sour cream and onion, salt and vinegar. I bet they have a ton of flavors, right? Okay, barbecue chips. And what packaging, what sizing do they sell? They got family size, normal size, travel size, party size. And each one is advertised and marketed to different consumers. The family bag is obviously marketed to people with a family. The party is when you're throwing a party. It's a bigger size. When you're traveling, you get the little one because you don't want to eat a whole bag, right? I'm trying to make a point here. There are so many categories and so many different types of products and variations and flavors and sizes of products you can sell. It's an infinite game. There is an infinite amount of things you can sell. And this exact same logic is applied to e -com, okay? There is an infinite amount of products you can sell on the internet. Look at Amazon. They have over 600 million listings on their platform. It's not about finding a winning product. It's about knowing how to market it. You could sell anything as long as you know how to market it. So why are you focused on what to sell when really you should be focused on how to market? How do I market? How do I get better at marketing? And how do you learn how to get better at marketing? Well, you actually market. You actually do the thing. You do it again and again and again and improve again and again and again. And so let me ask you a question. Is it better to practice on a bunch of different niches, a bunch of different products, or is it better to stick to one and focus on one? If you're trying to become a professional basketball player, are you over there playing with a football? Are you on the ice playing with a hockey puck? 
No, you're 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 having a basketball in your hand, shooting shot after shot after shot after shot. That's how you get good at one thing. And in the competitive landscape of e-commerce, you need to be good. You need to be a professional at one thing. You need focus. That's the only way you're going to win in this game. You can't be testing out 100 products because you can't rightfully, you can't give each product the attention and time and effort it deserves. You just can't. Is it easier to build 10 great businesses or one great business? Is it easier to make 10 products profitable or just one product profitable? Think about it. You need focus, all right? This is you trying a bunch of products. Each, imagine each one of these lines is one inch. This is you, and each one of these lines is one inch. One product here, oh, make a brand here, baby carrier here, stroller here, food here, bracelet here, necklace here, fashion here. You're trying all these things, trying to figure out what works, what your winning product is, right? The reality is, any of them would work if you just focused on it. If you just tried one product and put all of your attention towards it in this arrow. Imagine you added up all these arrows and turned them into one arrow. That's what this arrow represents. You would get to a point where you're actually profitable and making consistent sales and making money online. Okay? So instead of doing this where you're testing a bunch of products, you have to pick one and marry it and do everything you possibly can to make that product profitable. You have to learn how to advertise that one product super well. You can't possibly be a master at advertising 10 different products. Pick one and learn it super well because with advertising, with marketing, a lot goes into it. For example, if you're selling a product, you have to envision, you have to know exactly who you're selling it to. What does the person look like? What are their demographics? Is it a man or a woman? Okay, great. It's a man. We're advertising to a man. Is he low income or high income? Okay, he's rich. Got it. High income. Is he black or white? He's white. Okay, cool. Does he live in the country or the city? Okay, cool. He lives in the city. Is he a Republican or Democrat? Oh, okay. He's a Republican. How does he like his coffee? I added this in there because you need to get concrete. Paint an image in your mind of the exact person you want to sell your product to. And who do you think will buy your product. You need to know on what platforms are they on? What time of day are they scrolling? What type of work do they do? What type of influencers, celebrities do they follow? What TV shows, what movies are they watching? Get inside the mind of your customer. When this person is scrolling on his phone, what makes him pause and actually be interested in the ad? Is it when you have some flashy girl in a bikini on the ad? Or is it when you're showing a really sharp knife because he's into hunting? Imagine you're the person that's buying your product and you're scrolling on your phone. What would you actually stop for? Next, you have what kind of messaging do they respond to? Add angles. What use case, what emotion are you trying to bring out? Are you solving a pain? Are you marketing it as a gift for a boyfriend, a girlfriend? Are you saying it makes you more attractive? Okay, there's an infinite amount of angles you can play with. This is infinite. And even in one angle, there's so many different ways to spin it. Let's say you're selling a thing that makes you more attractive, right? Like a beauty product. Okay, this beauty product makes you more attractive. Well, yeah, everyone says that. How are you going to differentiate? It makes you less ugly. It clears your skin. It makes you lose fat. How are you going to spin it? Okay, let's say in the beauty niche, right? All products are made to make someone look more beautiful, but they advertise it in so many different ways. There is an infinite amount of ways to spin it. Next, are you going to use videos or pictures? People respond differently to both. Even if you are, even if you do choose one. All right, let's say I'm going to advertise with videos. What type of videos? Is it going to be UGC content? Is it going to be rendered product videos? Is it going to be an unboxing? Someone showing off the packaging? There are infinite amounts and types of videos you can make to advertise your product. And same goes for pictures. What type of pictures? Are you using stock pictures, info pictures, or a product in action, a product placement pictures? There's an infinite amount of pictures you can use. And then what type of offers does your ideal customer respond to? Men are more rational and they look at the final price. They look at what am I paying? What is this costing me out of my wallet, out of my credit card? Whereas women respond better to what am I saving? Oh, there's a 50% off deal. I'm saving 
50 bucks here. I'm going to buy it right now before this countdown timer ticks off. And then what bundles, upsells, offers work for your ideal customer? You can even get as detailed as saying men prefer solid white backgrounds on product images while women prefer and will pay more for product photos with context, contextual images. Let's say you're selling something for the kitchen. They prefer product photos of that item in the kitchen in action. If you're selling to both, have the first one be a stock white photo and the next ones be contextual. Guys, they've done studies on this. I'm not pulling this out of my butt. I've, I've seen this in practice. As for women responding to deals better, guys, I think we all know this. It's human, like if you're advertising to women, make them feel like they're getting a special deal because they're seeing the ad. And you can do this in your ad by after having the call to action, just say, oh, by the way, here's the discount code for 30% off. You can't get anywhere else. You can even include it in the packaging and show it to them in the video ad. That converts like crazy. And then this gives you a much better idea for what bundles, upsells, and offers work really good for your ideal customer. Now that you know exactly who you're selling to and what upsells they respond to, you have a really good idea of what other products that person would be interested in, which makes your offering much better. You have a much higher success rate with the products you try and upsell and bundle. And when I figured this out, I had my big breakthrough in e-com. There is so many things to sell. There are so many products to try and sell. You just have to pick one and stick to it. And once you stick to it and learn the intricacies of selling this exact product, time and time and time and time again, you'll see your conversion rate jump from 3% to 4% to 4.5% to 5%. And then a month later, it'll jump to 6%. And then a month later, it'll jump to 7%. And it'll just keep growing. And this is how you build a successful e-com brand. Guys, I'm not talking out of my butt here. I'm talking from experience. I have wasted so many hours, months, weeks, days, testing out a bunch of garbage products. And the only time anything has ever worked for me is when I actually sat down, picked the product and put my full attention to it and focused on it. If you start doing that with whatever products you're trying to sell, you'll see your success rate skyrocket. Guys, my name's David. I'm documenting building an eight figure brand on this channel. If you want to follow along, subscribe. If you like the video, like it, leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.